Christmas. <laughs> well, I guess it's actually happy Boxing Day. Did you get up? Well, it was still dark out and line up to get a big screen TV. No, no, me neither. I am not a Boxing Day shopper, but if you are, I hope you get all the deals you're looking for this morning. <laughs> Well, this is our last week in our Joy to the World series. It has been so fantastic talking a bit more about the real meaning of Christmas. But I have one last game for us this morning. It's a good one. Are you ready? Let's go to it now. It is cold outside. Ooh, that means it's the perfect time to play one of my favorite winter games. Hot cocoa? No, no. It's super easy to explain, but hard to win if you're not paying attention. I'll show you several cups of delicious hot cocoa. One of these cups will not be so delicious, though, because it's made with salt instead of sugar. <laughs> the cups will then get shuffled up, but your challenge will be to keep your eye on the salty cup. Think you can do it? Great! Let's get started! Okay, shout out one, two, or three if you think you know which cup is definitely a no-no. Great job, everyone! Let's try another one. This one will be a little faster. Whoa, that was fast. Did you keep track of the salty cocoa? If so, shout it out. One, two, or three, if you think you know which cup it is. Woohoo, well done. <laughs> Let's try another one. This time with four cups of cocoa. That was definitely a little more challenging. Shout out the number if you think you know which cup it is. Nice job! Now, let's try it again. But this time, the cups are going to move a little faster. Okay, that, that was pretty tricky. Uh, did you keep your eye on the cup? If so, shout it out. One, two, three, or four. Way to go! That, that was impressive, but what happens if we add in one more cup of cocoa? Wowzers! Does anybody know which cup has the salt in it? Shout it out if you know it. Nice job. Uh, can you keep your eye on the cup if they're going crazy fast? Oh my! I, I, I think we might have spilled some cocoa on that one. Uh, does, does anybody know which one is the salty cup? Wow! Anybody who could keep their eye on that one must really love hot cocoa. Great job, everybody. <laughs> How fun was that? How'd you do? Pretty good? <laughs> so fun. All right, let's see if you can remember the three big ideas we've talked about so far. The first one was that Jesus came to bring good news to the world. Jesus came to bring good news to the world. The second was that Jesus came to bring joy to the world. Jesus came to bring us joy. Last time we talked about how Jesus came to bring peace to the world. That Jesus came to bring us peace. So let's look in our Bibles one more time. Again, I'm in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. Luke chapter 2, 41 to 52. Now, Jesus isn't a baby anymore in this story. He's a bit older now, probably about 12. Okay, so he's kind of like a tween. 
So this is Jesus the tween, and let's see what he's doing. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as they always did for the feast. When it was over and they left for home, the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Jesus was home alone. No, well, kind of. <laughs> he got left behind. Thinking he was somewhere in the company of pilgrims, they journeyed for a whole day and then began looking for him amongst his relatives and neighbors. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to keep looking for him. The next day, they found him in the temple, seated amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The teachers were all quite taken with him, impressed with the sharpness of his answers. But his parents were not upset. They were upset. Or they were not happy. They weren't impressed. They were upset and hurt. His mother said, Young man, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been half out of our minds looking for you. Kind of sounds like a mom, hey? Young man, what do you think you're doing? And Jesus said, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be here dealing with the things of my father? But they had no idea what he was talking about. So he went back to Nazareth with them and lived obediently with them. His mother held these things deeply, dearly and deep within herself. And Jesus matured, growing both in body and spirit, blessed by both God and people. Hmm. So Jesus the tween gets home alone. He gets left behind on purpose though. He wants to. He wants to spend extra time learning and sitting in temple learning about God, his heavenly father. It says that the other teachers were amazed at how much Jesus already knew. But we know that's because Jesus was fully man, fully human, but also fully God. And of course he knows his father because he is his father. He is part of the Trinity. He is part of the Godhead. And Mary and Joseph don't know this, but they get mad. But in the end, they say, well, I guess we're just going to kind of have to roll with it. And they do. And Jesus lives in obedience to his mom and dad from that point forward. But Jesus was teaching in the temple as well as listening, because ultimately when Jesus came, it was so that others could know more about his father. Which brings us to our last big idea. It's here in our bag here. We have Jesus came to bring good news. Jesus came to bring joy. Jesus came to bring peace. And Jesus came so the world could know God. from a play I was in once. I put them on because they reminded me of last week's Bible story and made me feel full of peace. Bah! We got another message from a friend who lives in a totally different place in the world called Japan. Can you say that with me? Japan! Japan! Let's check it out! Merry Christmas, Kelly! What do you like to eat on Christmas Eve? My family likes to eat fried chicken. A lot of people here in Japan like it too. It's the yummiest. Okay, bye-bye. Isn't that a cool tradition? My family eats ham usually, but I love fried chicken. So I got a bucket of fried chicken so that I could celebrate Christmas just like Elijah and his family. Friends, Elijah lives in a place that is on the complete other side of the world and he also knows about Jesus and celebrates Christmas. Isn't that amazing? I'm gonna chew in some fried chicken while we check out today's Bible story. It's time for today's Bible story. Our story begins with Jesus' mom and dad on a journey again. Jesus wasn't a baby anymore, though. He was 12 years old and walking beside Mary and Joseph, Jesus' dad. They were going to a festival, which is like a big party 
the party was in a town called Jerusalem. When the festival was over, they headed home. But Jesus' parents couldn't find Jesus anywhere. They looked everywhere with no luck. So they began to go back to Jerusalem. And there Jesus was. They found him in a place where all the very smart people were. These were people that knew the most about God. This place was called the temple. Even though Jesus was just a boy, he understood just as much as they all did. People were amazed at him. Jesus' parents asked why he had to let them worry. Jesus told them that he had to be in his father's house. They didn't really understand. What father was Jesus talking about? True, Jesus was the son of Mary and Joseph, but he was also the son of God. He wanted to know more about God so he could start telling others about God too. He had to be at the temple because Jesus came so that the world could know God. Friends, have your parents ever given you a job to do? Like pick up toys or books? Jesus was just a kid, but he had a big job. He came so that others might know God. The really cool thing is that even though we're kids too, we have the same job. We can help others know God by sharing joy, peace, and love with others. It's a good thing I cleared out some space in my tummy because I want to invite you all to something very special. Come on. Our family has a huge Christmas Eve dinner, and we invite everyone from our neighborhood. My mother also says prayer before we eat. She says thank you to Jesus, who came so that we can know God. Jesus came so that others might know God. What is one way that you can help others know God this Christmas? Merry Christmas, friends. It has been fun learning and growing with you. I love that how in this story, Jesus was spending time with the one he loved the most, God. But how are some ways you can spend quality time with the people that you love? What are some ways you can spend quality time with the people that you love? Hmm. Maybe baking cookies, great idea. Reading a book, watching a Christmas movie, all of those are fantastic ideas, I love it. Hmm, but, what are some ways you can spend time with God to get to know Him better? What are some ways we can spend time with God? We could, we could read our Bibles. We could watch PJ Church, excellent idea. We can talk to our moms and our dads or our grandparents about the things about God, ask them questions and then listen, like how Jesus asked questions and listened. Those are all great ideas, I love them. So we're gonna pray and then hear our last round of Christmas jokes. All right, let's pray. So Jesus, thank you that you came as a baby to give us joy and peace and to help us learn to know God better. Thank you so much for all of those things. We thank you, God, that today around Christmas and for the whole rest of the year, you're here with us, always working in us and through us to help bring your message of peace and hope and love to the world. We love you. Thanks for loving us. Amen. <laughs> what do you call an old snowman? Water. What do gingerbread men use when they break their legs? Candy canes. What did one snowman say to the other? Do you smell carrots? What music do elves like best? 
rap music. <laughs>